It says in Hebrews chapter 12, it says, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, there's going to be some shaking, but you have a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Let us therefore show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. The God that we worship today is a consuming fire. And that fire, that presence is inside of you. Paul told Timothy, he didn't say, Timothy, start a fire. He said, Timothy, kindle it afresh, let it burn. And I want us to stand this morning and I want us to pray and just declare that this year we're going to burn with the fire of the presence of God like ever before. This is a year to be consumed with the fire of God. So God, we come to you right now and we thank you for the finished work of Jesus yes. on the cross. Yes. We thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank we thank you that you did your work perfectly. There's nothing to add to it. We thank you, Jesus, that you rose on the third day, that you are alive in 2024. And we thank you, Jesus, that you ascended to the Father and that you poured out the Holy Spirit and we thank you that you are a consuming fire burning in us. And this is our year to burn. This is our year to burn. To burn like never before with fire from your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for that fire of love that is burning in your eyes right now. And God, we thank you that that fire burns off any restrictions, any chains, any resistance. We thank you that mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. And so Father, I thank you for fresh fire today. I thank you for first love fire being stirred up, stirred up in our hearts. Thank you, thank you for the privilege and honor of coming before you, Lord, of entering and living in the holy place. Thank you that you've made us the holy of holies, that worship flows out of these temples. We will not hold back. We will not hold back in 2024. We will not hold back the praise that is inside of us. We will not hold back the love that is inside of us. We will not like you're a weak God. We will not act like you're a God who's far away. We will know and walk in the fullness of who you are, Jesus. We will not fail your glory. We will not hide your light, but we will let it shine. And we thank you. Thank you for the privilege of worshiping you in this place. Hallelujah. Let's lift our voices. Hallelujah.
hallelujah. Means praise Yahweh, praise God.
exodus of my heart Cause you found me, you freed me Held back the waters from my eyes Oh Yahweh You're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory Hallelujah Hallelujah torn apart the sea you have led me through the deep hallelujah hallelujah the god you're the god who fights for me lord of every victory hallelujah hallelujah you have torn apart the sea you have led
We just recognize your holiness in this place right now. We just want to see you rightly, Lord. Just give us the fear of the Lord right now. Let us see that you are God, that you are holy. sing holy you are holy 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 are you Lord you are holy 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 are you Lord oh so hard 
to recognize the person I was before I encountered Christ. I don't walk like I used to. I don't talk like I used to. I've been washed from the inside. I've been washed from the inside. Everything changed. It's getting harder to recognize the person I was. Before I encounter Christ, I don't talk like I used to. I don't walk like I used to. I've been washed from the inside. I was washed from the inside out.
about deserve or it's a gift that's freely given <laughs> let me tell you it's only by the blood it's never been about performance perfection or striving for acceptance let me tell you it's only by the blood it's never been about deserve gift that's freely given, let me tell you, it's only by the blood, it's never been, it's never been about performance, perfection, or striving for acceptance, let me tell you, it's only by the blood, it's never been about deserving, or earning, it's a gift that's freely given. Or earning, it's a gift that's freely 
conscience of the follower. But the blood of Jesus can purify us from the inside out, not from the outside trying to get in, but from the inside out. Yes. You put a new nature in us, Jesus. We just thank you. This is our thank you, Lord. This is our sacrifice of praise this morning. Because you already made the sacrifice. to the holy place you 
the blood yes. could have only been the blood hallelujah hallelujah i know it was the blood it could have only been your blood we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and a living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in the full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Yes. As we've been worshiping this morning, the Jesus. Lord has just been washing us yes. from the inside out, as we sang a little bit earlier. But he's been washing us of things that just, that don't go with us through the rest of this year. And we're gonna live in 2024 in the full assurance of faith yeah. yes. because the blood is enough it's not your performance it's not your having it together it's that jesus performed jesus is your togetherness yeah. yes. jesus is your performance yes. jesus is your righteousness it will never be you and it never was up to you it was always been him so Lord, I thank you right now for the full assurance of faith. And I just see the Lord washing away some doubts, insecurities. He's breaking off accusations. Accusations are leaving in Jesus' name. You just point whatever's talking to you to the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the only way you stand. The blood of Jesus is your enough. And the blood of Jesus will be your enough for all eternity. And there will never be anything that needs to be added to the blood. It's the blood of Jesus, period. So Father, I thank you for the full assurance, the full assurance of faith. And I thank you that our hearts are sprinkled clean. And I just declare over you that your heart is sprinkled clean. Yeah. You are entering this year with a clean heart because of the blood, because you've been given a new heart. You don't have the old heart that's evil. Ezekiel says, I will give them a new heart and I will cause them to walk in my statutes. <laughs> it's coming from the inside out. And we are washed and sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies are washed with pure water. I declare over you today that your body is washed. Every cell of your body is washed 
by the blood of Jesus. Lord, we just declare that in this room right now, that every cell of our being is washed and clean as we enter 2024. And Lord, for those who couldn't come today because they're sick, we declare right now your body is washed with the blood of Jesus. And there is healing power in the blood of Jesus. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for the washing and renewing of the blood. Thank you, Lord. Brandon, would you just come and share that word you were sharing with Andrew a minute ago? Well, you shared basically half of it, so. <laughs> yeah, that's all good. Um, yeah, I saw the Lord on his throne, um, and I saw him in the beginning stages of moving off the throne. And I felt the Lord saying, I'm beginning to move this year. And then I saw an anchor, and it was leading to the throne. And um, on the shaft of it was this, like a stairway. Like, and I felt the Lord saying that we need to be anchored in his presence so that he can move through us. And uh, I felt some scriptures on my heart, all from Hebrews. I was going to share the 1023, but um, so I just wanted to release those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because <clears throat> the amazing thing about Hebrews is that it's showing us that Christ accomplished our access to God's presence. Because when he says we have access to the, the Holy of Holies, he's not saying, like, let's line up in Jerusalem and go take a selfie by the Ark of the Covenant, okay? He's saying what, he's saying we have access to the very presence of God in heaven yeah. where Jesus has entered, right? Not uh, the tabernacle made with hands, but the one made by God in heaven. Yeah. And that's the holy place that we enter. It's by the blood of Jesus and the breaking of his flesh that we have confidence and access to God with boldness right. to enter in that place and to stay there. It just takes full assurance of faith and a pure heart. Faith to believe that you can and a pure heart to find the right door, okay? And I felt these scriptures on my heart that we have this sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, the one that enters the presence beyond the veil where Jesus has entered as a forerunner in the order of the priests of Melchizedek. I also felt this one from the Lord that on the one hand, we have the doing away with the, the commandment, and on the other, the bringing in of a new hope by which we draw near. Um, and I just want to encourage you, maybe we could even look at our neighbor right now and say, you have a free pass. Let's do that. You have a free pass to the very presence of the living God. And that is a holy thing. And we're going to be this year, we're going to be stewards of the presence of God, like the Levites carrying the ark of God. We are going to be stewards of this holy calling that we have as we partake of Christ and his living presence. And I want to encourage you not to diminish the meaning of these scriptures. It is a otherworldly, mind-blowing thing that we can go and experience a living God. It's actually what we have that proves that every other God is false. And we need, we have a responsibility, we have a holy charge to carry His presence. And I just want to charge you with that for 2024 so that God can move mightily through us. So, Lord, thank you so much for the access we have to your holy place, God. Thank you that we are holy and without blemish in your sight, Lord, because we continue steadfast and grounded in faith. Lord, I thank you that <clears throat> the work of your Son accomplished this thing. And I make no small thing of that precious blood, Lord. It is not common. It is the precious blood of the Lamb of God that has truly washed us clean. And if you have doubts, submit them to God. Submit them to the scriptures. Because there's, that precious blood has purified our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Lord, I thank you what you're doing in all the families and all this city this year. In Jesus' name, amen.
If you agree with that, say yes, Lord. Yes, come on. Well, we're going to take communion together. If you would grab the communion elements there and, and pray that you can get them open. That was my prayer on Sunday morning. Lord, please help me to be able to get the communion elements open. Thank you, Jesus. Just give you one minute more. <laughs> if you can't get it, ask someone to help you near you. Or go ahead and break their bread and share it. Jesus, we're so thankful. We're thankful for your body that was broken for us. And the reality of what we have experienced that right now we are in the Holy of Holies and we're able to stand. We're able to lift up our eyes because of the blood, because of your broken body. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Jesus, we thank you for the blood. And we just receive everything that we've been talking about, that we've been singing today, that it's only by the blood. We thank you that you've been washing us and renewing our minds and our hearts to trust completely in the power of the finished work of the cross. Thank you. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the new covenant. Free us, Lord, where we're still have hung on to anything that's old. Father, we thank you for the new. And we embrace everything that you purchased for us. You said this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Take and drink. Can we just stand up for a moment? And can we just shout out hallelujah? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Wow. What a way to start the year. Well, you can be seated. Uh, we're going to right now receive our tithes and offerings. And uh, we have some, some baskets up here and some other ways you can give online. Lord, we just thank you that through the blood, we have access to the fullness of your provision. That we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And I thank you for abundance in 2024. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to release to you what's already yours. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, you can, you can give, and I uh, believe we have some video announcements. Good morning, and welcome to Convergence on Family First Sunday, where we exist to encounter Jesus and transform cities with his power and love. We are excited you've joined us today here on campus and online. If you have a prayer request, testimony, or if this is your first time with us, there are cards in the seat back in front of you to fill out, and then you can place them in the offering baskets up on the stage or back at the sound booth. If you've joined with us online, you can find the form links in the video description or on the website below. And then anyone can text the word guest to 817-293-5050 to fill the guest card straight from your phone. Then I want to invite you to our Discover One Lunch where you can meet some of the staff and hear more about the mission, vision, and values of this house. That is happening on Sunday, January 21st over in the Fellowship Hall right after the service and the welcome team in the foyer is happy to help you sign up for that today. Our creative team is accepting applications starting today and will be open till Sunday, February 4th. Our creative team includes our worship, media, creative, production, and house of prayer teams. This includes, but is not limited to musicians, singers, artists, video production, camera operators, lyrics, and so much more. If you are feeling a call to serve in any capacity in any of these teams, you can email Justin at justin at and he will send you the form to apply today. 
Our monthly Convergence Prophetic Reformers is starting back up on Wednesday, January 17th at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. These nights include biblical teaching on the prophetic and how we engage in healthy ways with increased understanding and growth and how you can personally hear God and practical activations. This is open and free to the region and all ages are welcome and you can jump in at any time. So join us Wednesday, January 17th. Our next big Prophetic Reformers event is coming up on Saturday, February 10th. Raising Up Prophetic Reformers is for those that have ever wondered how to help others grow in the prophetic. Whether it be your children or others God has called you to lead, this online Zoom workshop is for you. This workshop will equip parents and leaders in how to effectively help someone recognize the ways God is speaking to them, as well as how to help them understand how to impact the world around them with His voice. Again, this will be a Zoom video call workshop happening on Saturday, February 10th at 10 a.m. And deadline to register for that is February 8th. And here are a few more events coming up. We also have House of Prayer, men, women, youth gatherings, and table groups happening this week and throughout the month. To get details of these events and more, you can visit the events calendar on ConvergenceChurch.com where you can also sign up to be put on our weekly What's Happening at Convergence emailing list. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause His face to shine upon you and give you abundant rest this week. And I will see you next weekend. Bye! All right, kids, you can start making your way up to the front. How are y'all doing today? Doing good? So, your first time? Welcome to Convergence. You know, you do know. He does. Well, welcome. We're so happy to have you. What's your name? Welcome, thanks. Oh, there's a lot of you today. Don't worry, there's plenty of room. Come on up. Now, real quick, before I get started, just to keep things smoothly, now, let's remember to stay seated on the ground. So don't get on the stage. Stay seated where you are on the ground. So, y'all, this month, Pastor Andrew, he's going to be talking about living on a mission. That's pretty cool, right? Who here likes missions? I know I do, for sure. So this morning, I want to talk to each of you a little bit about what this means for us. You see, because God is a king, like any king, he has a kingdom. Do any of you know what that kingdom might be? Yeah? Samuel. Heaven, that's right. That kingdom is heaven. Did you all know that each of us actually have a part in that kingdom? You see, when we receive Jesus into our hearts, can everyone touch their heart? When we receive Jesus into our hearts, we become children of God and are then a part of that kingdom. And since God is king over all the universe, that makes you and me princes and princesses. And as princes and princesses, we have an inheritance. Now, inheritance is a pretty big word. Does anyone know what that means? Anyone? You know what is that? Yeah, that's right. It's like what you get. Do you have an answer? That's right. When things get passed down to you, what you get from your parent or your guardian, that's an inheritance. Um, and God has an inheritance for us. Basically, what that means is that Jesus wants you to have on earth all of the good things that he has in heaven. In fact, James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. So every good thing in your life comes from God. So what do you guys think that the Father has as an inheritance for us? Any answers? Yeah. Yeah, a place in his kingdom. That's so good. Anyone else? Jesus. Yeah, what else? Yeah, every good thing, right? So he has healing, right? Like we, we can be healed. We can pray for healing. He has peace. He has joy. And most importantly, he has friendship with God or Jesus. That's how we can be friends with God, right? So we have all these beautiful treasures. And God loves to give all these beautiful treasures to his children. But guess what? He has even more in store for us. God, your father in heaven, 
He has a plan for you. And this is no ordinary plan. You see, this plan leads to a life that is full of excitement and adventure. This life is, yes, and it comes from Jesus because Jesus is life. And it is better than any other life that the world will try to offer you. Because this life, you guys, boys, this life involves a mission. Do you all know what that mission is? That mission, yeah. Yes, to spread the fullness of the gospel, which means to bring heaven to earth. This is our royal mission, bringing heaven to earth. And when Jesus actually, he taught his disciples how to pray, and it's called the Lord's Prayer. And in the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew 6, 10, it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that means that Jesus desires that everything that's happening in heaven, he wants to happen here. And do you all know how he does that? Who does he do that through? Jesus, who else? There's us. That's right. Good job. Jesus does that through you and through me. So we can bring heaven to earth by praying for healing instead of hurt. Guys, we can bring it by cleaning our room to bring peace and order instead of chaos, right? We can do it. I'm sure your parents love that. That's for you, parents. <laughs> we could do that. We can do that by being kind, right? By being nice and bringing love and kindness instead of hate. So everything we do, everything we do, we have an opportunity to, I, to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth through doing what the Father desires. So this is our royal mission, bringing heaven to earth. Can you guys say royal mission? Bring heaven to earth. That's right. Good job, guys. You can go take your seats, but remember to come grab your gift at the end of service. Wow, can you guys hear me? Awesome. Wasn't worship good? Man, I've been listening to that song all week. It's never been about performance or striving for acceptance. Let me tell you, it's only by the blood. Does anybody want to be righteous, holy, purified, and spotless? Let me tell you, it's only by the what? The blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. The Lord gave me a word as we enter 2024 from Ezekiel 37, chapter 3, where Ezekiel has a vision of a valley of dry bones. And in the, in the vision, Ezekiel is walking in a valley, and it even uses this descriptor. It says they were very dry. I don't know exactly what very dry bones would look like, but it's not just bones, it's very dry bones. This is a very dry place. And Ezekiel sees this, and I love, I love that um, Ezekiel's response back to the Lord was, because the Lord says to Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel's response is, only you know, Lord. Don't you love that? Sometimes we don't have to have all this, like, super religious answer for everything. What if it's only you know, Lord? And then what happens next? Who knows? Prophesy over the dry bones that they may live. That's what the Lord says. So the Lord gives Ezekiel an assignment to prophesy breath into the bones. And as I was praying about this, I was like, Lord, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what, what brings life? And I felt like the Lord said, this year, 
there's an invitation to a deeper place at the Lord's table, which is his body and his blood. And as we spend even more time in the simplicity of the gospel, who he is, what he's done for us, we allow the blood of Jesus to wash us, cleanse us, and actually bring life to dry places. And so what I saw is through the inner working of the Holy Spirit and the fresh filling of the Holy Spirit, as we emphasized the Lord's table, what he's done, his body and his blood, I literally saw dry places begin to come to life. And as it says in Isaiah, he says there will be rivers in the wilderness. And I really felt this emphasis this year, and if you've been at Convergence for any length of time, this is not just an emphasis that we're doing one time. Um, Sometimes I feel like we're a broken record, and I love it. We cannot get away from Jesus. We cannot graduate from the gospel. We cannot graduate from what his body and his blood has done. We cannot graduate from the Lord's table. I don't want to be anywhere but the Lord's table. And I think it's important as a church that we simplify. When we say our vision statement is to encounter Jesus and transform cities with his power and his love, it's that every single one of us would never grow tired of encountering Jesus. And then we bring other people in and we say, hey, don't look at me, look at Jesus. And so as we live on a mission this year, I'm sure I have a slide for that. Here we go. Uh, Vision 2024, as we live on a mission, I just want to give a few keys to living on a mission. This year, we're going to make things simple and practical. We will live on a mission to be willing to be used by the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to people around us. And so there's three keys that I want to give you this morning for our vision Encounter Jesus, transform cities. How do we live on a mission to see this vision happen? There's three ways I want to invite you into this morning. The first is to invite people. Invite people to the table. Invite people to your table. Invite people to this table. Not because we're like, hey, it's all about convergence, but we're saying, hey, come meet Jesus. Come meet Jesus. This isn't about a a a service. This isn't just about filling red chairs. This is about people encountering Jesus. Did you know that next week we're going to have baptisms next week? Come on. And if you need to be baptized, next week is a great opportunity to be baptized. You can talk to Wesley. He would love to talk to you more. He's raising his hand. He's waving it. He would love to talk to you more about baptism if that's something that you're interested in. But we've had, we've had people receive Jesus that now want to get baptized. And I'm just here to tell you, this is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. The harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. But guess what? We're going to go into the harvest and follow the chief harvester. So invite people. The next one, step out and talk about Jesus. man, I'm not supposed to preach on this this morning. But what, uh, what Briley said, and we kind of glossed over it in worship, she talked about whitewashed tombs. Do you know what she's quoting? She's quoting Matthew 23, when Jesus gives eight woes to the Pharisees. And one of the woes is you're a whitewashed tomb. You try to be beautiful on the outside, but the inside is rotten. And what I feel, and okay, uh, I can't be too... Hard here, but I think some of us, I think we've, we need to be willing to step out and talk about Jesus. If Jesus has changed your life, then you should talk about him. (laughs) Do you know that when I'm in circles with, okay, I don't know how this is going to go, but when I'm, when I'm in conversation specifically with other, like if, a, if I'm in a conversation with a single woman, do you know what I do? I bring Emily up all the time. Why? Not because I'm concerned about something, because I want someone, I want that person to know I'm in covenant. 
I don't care if you have good intentions, bad intentions. It doesn't matter to me. Hey, yeah, you know, my wife Emily would love to, we would love to meet you. I bring her up. Guess what? If my heart has been changed from the inside out by Jesus, I want to bring Jesus up. I want to bring Jesus up to my coworkers. If he's changed your life, why not talk about him? All right, step out and talk about Jesus. The second is learn and grow. Get plugged into the word. And I want to just announce one thing that we're going to do as a church is we are going to be reading the entire book of Acts. Starting February 1st. Okay, so February 1st. How many chapters are in Acts? Who knows? Kids, anybody? 26 is close, but not 27 is close, but not right. 28. <laughs> you guys were close. There's 28 chapters in Acts. There's 29 days in February this year because we have a leap year. And so you get a bonus day in case you miss one. But here's what I want to call us into, okay? We're living on a mission. And we're not just going to talk about it. We're not just going to get a living on a mission graphic. We're not just going to have a living on a mission bumper sticker. We're going to actually live on a mission. When you read the book of Acts, if you read the book of Acts and it doesn't challenge your life, you're not reading it right. I don't know what chapter you're reading. You're not really probably reading the word in that case, <laughs> right? But Acts is one of the most challenging scriptures because it will convict the way that you live your life on a mission. Did you know that the Holy Spirit wants to pour out his spirit on people as you walk in Walmart? I love the scripture where it says they literally were bringing people just so Paul's shadow could pass by so that they would be healed. So we're going to read Acts. We're going to be talking about Acts on Sundays in February. We're going to be um, also talking about it in our table groups. And so as a church, we are going to center ourselves to start the year starting February 1st. We are going to be in the book of Acts. So I want to encourage you. What we're going to do is we're going to read a chapter of Acts a day starting in February. Now, if you get behind, it's okay. You can catch up. But I want to encourage you, there is no better way to start the year than to get so saturated with this. Get in his word. And so we're going to do that collectively as a body. Is that cool? Can we do that? Yeah. All right. We pray. Jesus, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for what you've already done this morning, Lord. Jesus, we're not here for a, s a sermon. not here for words on a page. We're not here just to sing songs. We're here to meet you. We're here to meet with you. We're here to encounter you through the Holy Spirit. So we give, we give you space in this service, Holy Spirit. Reveal Jesus in a greater measure. Reveal Jesus to a greater measure, Lord. As we start 2024, our desire, our desire, our desire is to not just do things for you, but to be intimate with you. God, I have no desire to do the work of ministry and actually miss the intimacy of being with you. Lord, we're not here to be Martha, where she's serving and all about what to do, do, do. We're here to be Mary. We're here to sit at the feet of the one that has washed us from the inside out. We're here to sit at your feet, Jesus. We're here to behold the man, Jesus, and all that he's done. Lord, one thing you're doing in this season, you're stripping away cultural Christianity that likes to look good on the outside, but the inside isn't actually submitted. The inside's not surrendered. The inside's not intimate, Lord. One of the greatest things that you say in the end days is 
depart from me, you who never knew me. God, our desire is to know you. Strip away anything that needs to be stripped in order that we would just sit at your feet and give you everything. Our whole heart, our whole year, all of our goals, all of our resolutions, all of our ideas, all of our things, Lord, would we lay it at your feet, Jesus? You can have it. You can have it. I am my beloved and he is mine. You can have it. You can have it. You can have it. Let's just wait a second. Can we do that? If you're sitting and you're like, what do I do right now? Just reach your arms out. Just engage him for a minute. I have probably 13 pages of notes, but I really feel I'm supposed to wait. If you're here and you're a little uncomfortable, that's okay. Lean into the uncomfortable place. Lean into the silence. Jesus. We wait on you, Jesus. We won't move until you say we can move. you, Jesus. Yeah, really quickly, let's just lift our hands for a second. I know this is not normal, but it's normal for the Holy Spirit. He wants to move this morning. I have no idea what I'm doing which is the best part of this service right now. <laughs> Lord, we rely on you. Just really quickly, let's just sing this together. More love, more power, more of you in my life. Love, yeah, just sing it. More power, more of you in my life. More love. More love. More power. More of you in my life. And I will worship. And I will worship you with all of my heart. And I will worship you with all of my strength, and I will worship you. For you are my Lord. You are my Lord. More power, more love, more power, 
more love, more power, more of you in our lives in 2024. More, more. We've tasted and we've seen. We're not satisfied, Lord. There's more, there's more, there's more. There's more love, there's more power, there's more. There's more, more than words, more than words. There's more than just words, Lord. open ourselves to you. We open ourselves up to you, Jesus. <laughs> oh. I feel like we're supposed to do one thing and then I, I, I'm going to break open the word for at least a little bit. But if you are over the age of 30, would you stand? If you're over the age of 30, it's going to be a lot of people. All right. All right. If you are sitting down, that means you're under the age of 30. Here's what I want you to do. And kids, I want you to help me with this, okay? Can you guys help me? All right. I want everybody that is seated. There's the people that are standing outnumber us, so we'll have to kind of work through that. I want you to find someone standing and pray for them. I want you to just pray for them. I want you to just put your hand on them. You can just say something as simple as, more love, more power, Lord. And what I saw, I saw this picture of the younger generation blessing the older generation. And so, Lord, right now, we pray for these that are standing, Lord. We ask you for more love and more power. We thank you. Lord, whatever age you're at, there's a, there's a renewing of youth like the eagle. Some of you, maybe you've been like, I don't know if I can accomplish my calling. I don't know what this looks like in this season. And I just see the Lord saying, you're not done yet. There's more that he has for you. There's more. There's more. Just pray for just a minute longer. Just bless them. We bless even those that are, that are younger, that are, that are praying, you can even say, we bless you with even the passion and the zeal of youth to run. To run and not grow weary. To run and not grow weary. All right, just take another minute. If you're prophesying, you can finish your word. Fire. We release fire. We release fresh fire right now. Fresh fire in the 30 and overs. Fresh fire. If you're watching online and you're 30 and up, just receive this. Fresh fire in this year. Fresh fire. Yes, fresh power, fresh presence, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, yes, yes. All right. We're going to do one more thing, okay? Let's go ahead and have everybody seat, sit. All right. Now... If you are 30 and under, I want you to stand up. Under 30. Under 30. Wow, awesome. Come on. All right, now you guys know the drill. If you are seated and you're like me and you're over 30, let's just find somebody to lay hands on. Lord, we thank you for these youth. 
We thank you, Lord, for the young people, Lord. Right now, we just bless them. We bless them, Lord. We thank you for their hearts that are on fire for you. We thank you. We thank you for their heart for the gospel, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the prophetic gifting. We thank you that you're unlocking something. We just bless them, Lord. We just, even as, as an older generation, we just bless them. We bless them. We bless them. We thank you for the passion and the zeal that is on the inside of them, Lord. We just bless them, Lord. We bless them. Just speak a blessing over them. This is a picture of the generations praying for one another and releasing each other. We need each other. The younger generation needs the older generation, and the older generation needs the younger generation. We bless you as you enter 2024. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you to take the fire of God to your schools. We bless the intimate times with the Lord this year. We bless your secret place with the Lord. We bless that time with the Lord. We bless that time with the Lord. Lord, I ask you for eyes to see and ears to hear. I feel like the Lord says some of you have been doubting if you hear the Lord. And right now there's something that's being unlocked that you're going to begin to not just hear the yelling, you're going to hear the whispers of the Lord as you lean in. You're going to hear the whispers of the Lord as you lean in. So, Lord, we bless that, Lord. We just declare the Lord speaks to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's just take one more minute. If you're done, you can go ahead and be seated. If you're still praying, just take another minute. All right. That was fun. Thank you, Lord. More in 24. I like that. All right. Well, hey, I uh, really felt like we needed to just wait and just linger there for a while. So I'm now going to do, I feel, I feel released to kind of do an, a very abbreviated version of this message. That if you know me you know I have probably at least 12 pages of notes. Because that's just who I am. That's how I prepare, even if I don't share them all. Um, I always (laughs) over-prepare. And sometimes the Lord takes that over-preparedness, and he's like, I want you to do something like we just did and not do anything on your notes. And we yield to him. I want to encourage you as you enter 2024, yield to the Lord. Yield to the Lord. Surrender to him. Be intimate with him. Sit at his feet. All right. Radical faith. The word is radical faith is what I'm going to talk about for the next 20-ish minutes. Um, Radical. What does radical mean? Very different from the usual or traditional revolutionary reformer, one who stands out. Do you know that faith will cause you to stand out? Faith will cause you to stand out. Radical faith is faith that is not traditional, but it is revolutionary. One who has radical faith stands out. 
Did you know that radical faith in Jesus is not traditional, it's revolutionary? Sometimes faith is such a basic word. We're like, oh yeah, faith. I got the, you know, I graduated from that course. Did you know that it's your faith in him that makes you a reformer? It's your faith in him that makes you a revolutionary. And so what does faith mean? Does anyone have any ideas? What does faith mean? Trust. Trust. Yes, believing in Jesus, great. Yes, Brent? Uh, Sure conviction of the truth. truth. I love that because he's pulling on Hebrews, which we're going to hit in just a minute. Um, a few, so there's a phrase that you'll find in the Bible often, and the phrase is this, by faith, by faith. And it's actually mentioned in Hebrews 11, 19 times, by faith, Abraham did this, by faith, by faith, by faith, so much so that you cannot read Hebrews 11 and not be full of faith. Romans 5 says, therefore, having been justified by what? Faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. Thank God it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by what? Faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So this phrase is important, by faith. And Hebrews 11.1, which Brent just did a great job of quoting, now faith is the certainty of things hoped for, proof of things not seen. And that Greek word there is the word proof or conviction. Faith is the conviction of things hoped for. And I love what the King James translation, I don't often read the King James translation, However, in this moment, I love the way that it translates this verse. It says, now faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. What is substance? Substance isn't just some ethereal thing. Substance isn't blindly looking around and grasping at something. Substance is real physical matter of which a person or thing consists and which has a tangible, solid presence. Substance means it resides in something that is real. What's real? A God who was, is, and is to come. What's real? A man named Jesus that came to earth as a baby, died on a cross, and rose again, whose word we don't just read, what we actually believe. Why? Because he's not just, faith isn't just, I'm grasping for something that's in the air, hoping that I latch on to something. Faith is the substance of who Jesus is. Oh, it's actual substance. It's as if I picked this offering basket up. This is faith. And this is the Christian life is not walked by trying to find my way through everything. It's lived by following the substance. You want radical faith? Follow the substance. I told you guys we had to get here fast. So the definition of faith is this. Walking with the conviction that God is real, alive, and active, even if we don't always see it in the natural. We don't always see, but we know he is real. It's also important that we mention this. You don't earn faith. You don't finally graduate to the bumper sticker and you finally get the faith badge. Finally earned faith in my Christian life. No, 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 no. By faith, you are saved. By faith, by grace, through faith. By grace, through faith, right? That's Ephesians 2. So I don't try and earn a seat at the table. My seat at the table has been purchased for me. I just have to acknowledge that I need Jesus to sit at that table. This is, this is salvation. This is why salvation has to be by faith. Because I have to acknowledge, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I can't do life without Jesus. I can't stop sinning without Jesus. I can't find freedom without Jesus. I can't be whole without Jesus. I don't know what my dreams are without Jesus. And so we acknowledge that Jesus is the substance of what we need in our life. And we come sit at his table and he's like, hey, you don't have to earn it. Here's, here it is. Here it is. 
That's faith. It's when you trust him and you choose to believe in him. Meaning that I come to him as one that doesn't deserve it, but because of grace, I get it through my conviction and belief that he's the only way. And we need one way, not many ways. It's why we need the narrow way. We don't need a wide highway of options. We don't need cultural Christianity. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can have a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of that. Yeah, you can have faith over here in that, faith in politics, faith in the world, faith in that, and a little bit of faith in Jesus. Mix it into a bowl, and yeah, that's fine. No, faith is in Jesus alone. So you want to know how to walk? Forget, forget the basket. Forget the options. Forget everything but Jesus. The substance. For the gate is narrow and the way is constricted that leads to life, and there are few who find it. And I can guarantee you something this morning. Even if you don't believe in Jesus, I can guarantee you have faith in something. It's one of the arguments that atheists tend to lose. When you really start getting down to it, they do believe that something, like, something's happening. You might have faith in gravity. You might have faith in a lot of things, but you have faith in something. And I'll say this as a church, there's a remnant that's in this room this morning that will say, of all the choices, I choose Jesus. So faith is choosing Jesus in the midst of all other options. It's anchored in the conviction that Jesus is the only, the only one. And no matter what, his word is true. So quickly, walking in radical faith. There's three keys to walking in radical faith. And I want you to write these down. Number one, believing his word. Number two, believing who he says he is. And number three, being convinced of his nature. It's number one, believing his word. Romans 10, what does it say? 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes as we read his word. Your, your belief in the living God through his son Jesus as applied through the inner working of the Holy Spirit and so by faith, we believe that what he says in here, he actually means. I don't just mean the chapters we like and the ones we don't like. And No, 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 no. I'm saying if you believe this, something will happen. Oh, come on. You got to be more convinced than that. Am I talking to a room of people this morning that believe that when Jesus actually says something in here, that he actually, not only did he do it here, but he intends to do it again? Amen. He intends to do it again. So when the centurion stops Jesus in Matthew 8, and Jesus is like, yes, I will come. And the centurion's like, no, 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 listen, <laughs> I don't need you to come. I don't need you to come. I just need you to speak the word. Oh, come on. I just need you to speak the word. And it's one of the two times in Scripture where Jesus attributes, this is not a Jew, by the way. This is a Gentile. And he says, great faith. Great faith. Great faith. Why? Because this man wasn't just convinced that Jesus, he knew Jesus would walk and get there too. And he'd be like, oh yeah, if Jesus lays hands on the guy, He's going to be healed. But he's like, but I believe so much in what this man, uh, the authority that he carries, that I believe all he has to do is speak the word. That's believing the word. That's believing. All right. By faith. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by what? Not by sight. And I love this because when you look throughout the scriptures, you find so many examples of people that walked by faith and not by sight. Because if they walked by sight, they wouldn't have done anything that they did. Have you ever thought about this? Think about this. Think about Abraham going up the mountain with his only son Isaac. 
If you're just operating by sight, would you have done that? No, because that would be, that's not wisdom. He didn't know what the outcome was going to be. This story, this one story makes me want to close my Bible and go, I don't know, Lord. I don't know if I could walk up the mountain like that. I, I don't know if I could do that. Right? Walking by faith and not by sight. So listen, have you ever thought about these, these guys in the Bible? Like seriously, Joshua marching around Jericho? Like this would have been a viral TikTok video. The Israelites marched around the city walls once a day for six days, seven times on the seventh day, with the priests blowing their horns daily and the people shouting on the last day. You would have been labeled something weird. But you know what? <laughs> what happened? But here's the deal. Did they know? Did, they, didn't, they, they knew they needed to step out. They didn't exactly know how the Lord was going to do it. Elisha telling the woman in 2 Kings 4, go get as many empty vessels as you can find. Why? Because the oil will not run out as long as you have empty vessels. Right? Moses seeing God in a burning bush. Can you imagine a burning bush and you're walking up to it and all of a sudden the bush speaks to you? <laughs> like when you think about these stories, if you don't actually apply the faith to them, you're like, I don't know, that's kind of... But what's happening here? They believed God. Abraham and Sarah having faith that they could actually conceive at their age. Abraham was 100. Sarah was 90. But they believed God. David. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get a few rocks. And this shepherd boy is going to knock over this giant. Yeah, right. Not going to happen. Oh, yeah. Why? Faith and not by sight. Noah, can you imagine building a giant boat in your backyard and then deciding, oh yeah, I'm going to bring my family and all the animals on board because the Lord's going to unleash a flood. What would people have thought of you? Let's crucify reputation and influence for a second. What would people have thought about me? Oh, you mean that weird guy that's building a giant boat in his backyard because he thinks that some flood's going to happen. All of these people had two things in common. Number one, they probably were all called crazy and laughed at. Am I talking to some crazy people this morning? Yeah. It's going to get crazy. Here we go. Number two, they knew they needed God, not just kind of needed, not just sometimes needed, but cannot do this without you, God. And I love this because these great exploits that we talk about, they sound ridiculous when you don't know the outcome. We have the outcome because it's in here. But can you imagine in the moment, they had to walk by faith and not by sight. Like, what if I told you today, what if I told you guys that I'm supposed to go over there to that building over there and I'm going to walk around it six, for six days, okay? And then on the seventh day, I'm going to blow a giant trumpet. Then I'm going to scream at the top of my lungs, and something's going to happen. What would you tell me? Say, Andrew, that's a little, right? So can you imagine how this would have looked in the moment? But it's different, isn't it, when you know the outcome, it's easy, listen, it's easy to make a decision when you know the outcome, but it is radical to follow God even when you can't see the ending. This is faith. By faith and not by sight means I don't need the outcome or the ending. I just need the person. I just need the substance. I just need the substance. Walk around the building, okay. I just need the substance. I don't necessarily know how that's going to turn out. I don't know what people are going to think about me. I don't know where the money's going to come from. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I just need the substance. And when you have the substance, everything else is like just going to follow when you follow the substance. That's by faith and not by sight. This is faith, guys, okay? I move even if I can't see it right away. This is why... When he says by faith and not by sight, he means the faith becomes your sight. 
He means we walk not needing to see everything, not needing to get our way all the time, not needing to have it all figured out. But, but before we step out, we don't have to have it all written out, but we walk with Jesus as our sight. And this is why great faith many times invites more questions than it has immediate answers for. Because you're stepping out into waters you may not know how to swim in. And actually, the fact that you can't swim is what qualifies you to step out into it. Because you allow him to lead you. Come on, in 2024, some of you, you need to step into water you can't swim in. Some of you, you've been stepping into water, you, you've been stuck in the baby pool for too long. And the Lord's calling you into the deep end of faith to believe the Lord for radical, 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 radical things. Radical things that you can't do because the faith becomes your sight. Because you're like, as I lean into the substance, I begin to see things that I would never have done on my own. By faith, I can get there. By faith means you aren't focused on producing an outcome. You're focused on being obedient to and submitting to the lordship of Jesus in your life. Faith is simple but costly. It's foundational but revolutionary. It's not manufactured. It's not grasping for air. It's the reality of no matter what, I need Jesus and I trust him. It's trusting in the substance. And listen, faith is a lot more concerned about following than leading. Oh, I don't have time to go there. Some of us, we're spending... We're spending too much time leading, and the Lord wants us just to follow. What do I mean? I mean, we're leaning, we're leading in our own understanding. And we're walking down roads, and we're leading in our own understanding, and the Lord's like, hey, the best form of leadership is following. You want to learn how to lead? Follow. You want to know where you're going? Follow. Don't worry about leading, just follow. Follow. A shepherd always watches over the sheep, but a shepherd also always realizes that they're a sheep. I shepherd sheep, but I am a sheep to the Lord, and I follow him as the shepherd. All right, really, really, really quickly, because this is really important when we talk about faith. I'm going to take just a few more minutes. Uh, faith is not a denial of reality. Sometimes I think we have this idea that faith means saying everything is good when it isn't. If life is hard, it's okay that things are difficult right now. It's okay. So what I want to encourage you is that fake isn't faith. Disregarding your circumstances and the reality of your situation isn't faith, it's fake. Fake says you can't be honest about your situation because then you aren't having faith. Fake says always put a smile on your face and no matter what is happening. Just be strong and don't acknowledge weakness. Do you know that your weakness qualifies you for his strength? Some of us, we've been so stuck in trying to be strong for everybody around us when we need to actually be weak and allow the weakness, allow the Lord to be our strength in that place. And that is actually what faith is. Faith isn't, no, everything in my life is fine, even though everything, you know, like if you look behind me, everything's crashing around me, but it's all good. Everything's fine. I just, you know, no, it's okay. I love Romans 4 where Abraham, it says, without becoming weak in faith, he contemplated his own body, now good as dead since he was about 100 years old. So Abraham, the Lord has given him a promise, and yet he's like, Lord, I'm 100. How's this going to happen? He contemplates, right? He considered his reality and considered his weakness. But guess what? And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. The power of Christ dwells in me despite of my weakness. So my weakness doesn't disqualify me, it qualifies me. Because my acknowledgement of my weakness and my need for Jesus is revealing my faith in him. So faith doesn't mean things aren't hard. Faith doesn't mean I'm not struggling. 
Faith anchors me to who God is even when my present circumstances don't look like he is good. Faith is believing beyond. It is believing beyond. Some of us this morning, we need to believe beyond. We acknowledge, man, this is a hard season. I did not expect it to start the year this way. I didn't expect to end last year this way. I don't know what's going on, Lord. I don't know what's going on. But guess what? Because I know the substance... Because I have his blood and his body, because I know the substance, I have faith to believe beyond. But would you be my strength? Because right now I'm weak. Our present reality may be that we're broken, messy, stuck, needy. Anybody needy? (laughs) Right? I need him. Every day. Overwhelmed. But faith isn't disregarding. It's anchoring to a greater reality in the midst of everything. Faith is realizing that because of that, I cannot do life without Jesus. This is why Paul encouraged Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. So how do you fight the good fight? You remain tethered to the conviction that there's only one that can truly give me hope. There's only one that can truly set me free, only one that can save me, only one that can redeem my life from the pit. There's only one that can save my soul, only one that can heal my heart, only one that can give me everlasting peace. There's only one that gives me joy unspeakable, and there's only one way to heaven. And even if I don't see the promises here on earth, listen, this is really important. If I don't see the promises here on earth, ah, oh man, if I could have keys, that'd be awesome. Did you know that you're not going to see all of the promises here on earth? Some of us have been fed a gospel that is all of the promises that you believe are going to happen here on earth. And the Lord's actually crucifying that because the reality is that we have an eternal perspective. And if you lose sight of the eternal, you will get burned out in the now because you will live your life swirling for things that the Lord's like, I have that stored up for you in heaven. That's a really big deal. Because when you go through difficult things and you go through loss and there's the why questions and the answer's not really necessarily there, you have to anchor to the eternal perspective. You have to anchor to the eternal perspective. Not everything that you desire is going to happen here on the earth. But guess what? When we go to heaven or when he comes, all things are made right. There's full redemption. And that's why we have to anchor to that. We are saved, being saved, and will be saved. The will be saved is the final redemption where you can read about it in Revelation where there's no pain, where there's no, there's no. Can you imagine being in that place? And if you anchor yourself to that, you can actually weather the storm. Because we look for the blessed hope and the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Paul wrote to Titus. All right, this is the ending. You can stand. We're going to land the plane. I know this was a lot. But listen, the Lord this year, the Lord wants us to step into radical faith. Not because you can do it, but because he can. I love thinking about this like a grill. How many grillers do we have? It's okay if you're a, you know, you want to be a griller. You're not quite there yet. But if you have a grill, right, you, you turn the burners on, you know, you get everything set for this grill. But if I get everything set, and I've done this before, I've walked outside and I've thrown the meat on the grill and I've turned all the dials, and guess what? I don't have a spark. I'm not going to be able to cook that meat unless I have a spark. I can create the right atmosphere. I can set the grill on high. I can have that raw meat ready to go. But if I don't have a spark, that grill's going to sit there and nothing's going to happen. What's the point? The point is we set ourselves up. We get ready. We make the spread out. We've got all the desires. We've got everything there. But we have to have the faith that sparks. It's got to be the substance that lights that match, throws it on that grill, 
burst that fire up and actually allow something to be created. So this is the amazing thing about faith. We choose to open up our hearts just like a propane tank and the burners on a grill and we make our decision, but whose responsibility is it to light a spark? If you think it's your responsibility to light a spark, you're gonna be riding the hamster wheel of why isn't this happening? This is super important. It's not your responsibility to ignite a fire in your heart and to keep your heart burning. I love this quote from a pastor named Lee Cummings. He said, we don't handle the presence of God, we host him. We don't handle it, meaning we don't control it. I don't control the presence of, the God, of, of God, I yield to it. I live from it. So we put our faith in him and he through the Holy Spirit lights that fire he authors faith he becomes our eyes and in this season I felt like the Lord wants to author faith in a fresh way some of you you need faith for things that you've been contending for some of you need faith to hold on some of you you need faith to contend faith for the impossible some of you you need faith in the crushing and the pressing season faith in difficulty, faith where there hasn't been a miracle, faith that he can and he will be faithful because he's, he is faithful, but he wants to strike that match on your heart this morning. He wants to light that match and get that spark going and say, here's radical faith. Here's radical faith. It may look different than you've ever seen it before. You have to walk by faith and not by sight. So I don't know what it's going to look like, Lord. I don't know, but I'm going to step out and I'm going to allow myself to stay locked in on the substance. Because that's my faith. So this morning, Lord, we surrender to you. We surrender to you. And we say this morning, we need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you in the questions, Lord. We need you. There's areas where the Lord has asked some of you to step out already, and because you didn't know the outcome, you're like, I don't know if I'm supposed to do that. And the Lord wants to give you faith this morning to follow him, to believe him. So Lord, I ask this morning for everyone in the room and everyone watching online that you would light a fresh fire in our hearts of faith, Lord. That you would ignite radical faith. That I'm talking to a bunch of people in this room that are going to be willing to build a giant boat. That I'm talking to people in this room that are going to say, hey, is that a burning bush? That What does the Lord want to do? I'm going to march around that wall. I'm going to step out. I'm going to go after the one. I'm going to say everything is impossible, is possible with God. Everything is possible with you, Lord. So we step into that, Lord. We yield to you. You're the only one that can ignite the fire and keep it burning. This morning, I just want to encourage you as we launch into 2024. I want to encourage you to do so. Following the substance of faith, the radical faith that he wants to give us. I believe he wants to give us as a church faith for cities. He wants to give us faith. Faith for bigger things beyond even what we think our capacity is. So Lord, we just say yes to fresh faith. Lord, would you author something inside of us, Lord? Would you convince us? Would we be convinced of who you are to the point where we're like, I'm going to follow that voice. Lord, we just even ask you for certain situations where, where people are believing in faith for things. Lord, I just ask you for healings where there needs to be healings, Lord. Provision where there needs to be provision, Lord, where people are fighting the good fight of faith and they're like, man, I need a miracle, Lord. We ask you that you would reveal yourself to them, Lord. And we believe you, we believe your word, we believe who you are, we believe what you say you will do. We believe you, Jesus. We believe you. We believe you. We believe you and we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Would you be our sight this year, Lord? We're launching into 2024. 
We're launching into 2024, not with our own lenses, but with your lenses. Not with our own eyesight, but with your eyes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So we love you, Jesus, and we thank you for faith. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you that without faith it is impossible to please God. So we come and we just say, Lord, thank you for your gift of faith. Seal it in our hearts. Seal it in us. struggle. You're faithful. You're faithful to bring us through. You're faithful to bring us through. You're faithful to bring us through. Some of you right now, you're like, I don't know if I can step into that, Andrew. And you need to anchor to the fact that he's faithful to bring you through. He's faithful to bring you through. He's faithful to bring you through. prophetic teams they can gather over here on this side right here can we say yes as a church to walking in radical faith I, re I truly believe this I truly believe this and this is not some hype thing okay this isn't like a good marketing phrase I really believe that the best is yet to come. And I think as a church, we need to actually believe that in the midst of a year where it might bring questions, it might bring shaking, but if we're anchored to the substance, the best is yet to come. So anchor to the substance. All right, we have amazing prophetic teams up here. So thankful for our prophetic teams. Listen, there's no better way to launch into the year than to get a word. So I wanna encourage you, if you want a prophetic word this morning, uh, as a house at Convergence, we believe fully in the gifts of the Spirit. We believe in prophecy. We believe in the comfort, the encouragement, the consolation that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians. And so I just want to release you. You can come. You can get a word. Um, if you can line up on this aisle right here, that would be great. And we will have these teams ready to prophesy over you. Let's step in to this year with radical faith. Amen? All right. Well, we'll see you guys next Sunday. Excited about what the Lord's gonna do. If you're a guest and this is your first time here, don't forget to sign up for our Discover Convergence. The QR code's right there. You can scan that. We'd love to tell you more about our, our church, who we are. <laughs>